the second epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers, you gladly put up with fools since you are wise yourselves. For you put up with it if someone enslaves you or devours you or gets the better of you or puts on airs or slaps you in the face. To my shame, I say that we too are weak. But what anyone dares to boast of, I'm speaking in foolishness, I also dare. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I am talking like an insane man. I am still more with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, far worse beatings, and numerous brushes with death. Five times at the hands of the Jews I received 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I passed a night and a day on the deep, on frequent journeys and dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my own race, dangers from Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers at sea, dangers among false brothers, in toil and hardship, through many sleepless nights, through hunger and thirst, through frequent fastings, through cold and exposure. And apart from these things, there is the daily pressure upon me of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is led to sin and I am not indignant? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus knows, he who is blessed forever, that I do not lie. And Damascus, at Damascus, the governor under King Aretias guarded the city of Damascus in order to seize me, but I was lowered in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped his hands. If I must boast, not that it is profitable, but I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know someone in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up to the third heaven. And I know that this person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard ineffable things, which no man may utter. About this person I will boast, but about myself I will not boast, except about my weakness. Although, if I should wish to boast, I would not be foolish, for I, wouldn't be t I would be telling the truth. But I refrain, so that no one may think more of me than what he sees in me or hears from me because of the abundance of the revelations. Therefore, that I might not become too elated, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Please rise. From the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. When a large crowd gathered with people from one town after another journeying to him, he spoke in a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path and was trampled, and the birds of the sky ate it up. Some seed fell on rocky ground, and when it grew, it withered for lack of moisture. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. And some seed fell on good soil, and when it grew, it produced fruit a hundredfold. After saying this, he called out, whoever has ears ought to hear. Then his disciples asked him what the meaning of this parable might be. He answered, knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of God has been granted to you, but to the rest, they are made known through parables, so that they may look but not see, hear and not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those on the path are the ones who have heard, but the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, that they may not believe and be saved. Those on rocky ground are the ones who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, but they have no root. They believe only for a time and fall away in time of trial. As for the seed that fell among thorns, they are the ones who have heard, but as they go along, they are choked by the anxieties and riches and pleasures of life, and they fail to produce mature fruit. But as for the seed that fell on rich soil, they are the ones who, when they have heard the word, 
Embrace it with a generous and good heart and bear fruit through perseverance. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. St. Paul had reason to boast, and he had reason to complain. And he does both in the epistle today. But he does it with tongue in cheek, because he knows well that the work is God's work, that his life is in God's hands. What St. Paul does is run through the same litany of conceit and complaint that runs so often through our heads. Poor me, we say. I try so hard. I'm not a bad person, but look at all the bad things that happened to me. How many times has that passed through our minds? We shake our heads, we play the martyr, no good deed unpunished. No matter how much good I do, someone is always tripping me up. So the apostle recites this foolish litany of woe, but he issues this disclaimer. Brethren, you gladly suffer fools, so let me play the fool. Let me indulge in self-pity. Truly a fool's errand. And he goes on. Are they Hebrews? Are they sons of Abraham? Are they apostles? So am I, more than they are. I labor. I lose sleep. I suffer for the gospel more than all of them. I, I was scourged five times. I was beaten with rods three times. I was stoned. I was shipwrecked three times, clinging to a piece of wood in the open sea in the deep for a day and a night. No man has suffered like me in spreading the gospel. And he says this ironically, but he's accurate. He's right. He has suffered all those things. He is the great apostle. But he points out that his greatest, greatest suffering was mystical an out-of-body experience to the third heaven. He heard verba arcana, unutterable words or unknowable words. And it was precisely at this moment that he received a thorn in the flesh, an angel of Satan to beat me. No one knows what this thorn was, perhaps a physical infirmity of his feet or knees, particularly difficult, agonizing for one who spent his life walking around the Mediterranean region. Maybe it was relentless carnal temptations. Maybe it was his bad eyes or a temperamental weakness like quick temper, as we know he was prone to, or depression or self-doubt. Maybe it was a tumor that he had to bear in all of his missions, maybe psoriasis, maybe insomnia, maybe migraines, maybe the emotional paralysis that comes with the death of a loved one. God allows us to suffer these debilitations so that he might manifest his glory through our weakness. Three times, Paul asked God to heal him. In biblical language, three times, countless times. But the Lord did not relieve him. And so what did the great apostle do? He stopped complaining. He embraced his weakness for the love of Christ. God's grace is enough for me. Mother Teresa went through a dark night for 50 years where she felt unloved. She felt she, felt she had lost her faith. After 11 years of this darkness, she said, I have come to love the darkness because it is the will of God for me. It is my way towards heaven that he has marked out for me. It's my, it's my way of saving souls. So I love it. I've come to love the darkness. That's not where most of us are. We're working towards that. We have a long way to go. Bad anthropology and greedy pharmaceutical companies have teamed up to promote the fantasy of human life without pain. And most of us have unconsciously bought into that fantasy, that fable. We somehow believe that with enough technology or psychology, we can eliminate any kind of suffering. But it is God's grace, not medication, 
that makes suffering bearable and even, enjoy, even joyful. Yes, we have to try to reduce the pain in our lives that limits our ability to fulfill our duties of state. We have to exercise reasonable means to heal ourselves. We should take Advil or undergo surgery or talk with a trustworthy counselor. We should certainly talk with holy men and women, with our priests, if we have moral thorns in the flesh persistent temptations. But if we find ourselves obsessed with avoiding pain, when we can't bear any suffering, when suffering itself becomes an evil, when we, we may be rejecting God's plan for us, we may be denying God's glory. How many souls May God want to save through my affliction, beginning with my own soul. If I deny that affliction, if I reject the suffering, am I not rejecting the grace? When you suffer, said St. Padre Pio, do not ask why, ask what for. There sure, certainly is a reason. Some beautiful things come only through suffering, through self-denial and humble submission to what we cannot change. We were made to suffer, St. Therese says. We were made for the pasio, to receive. Passion, of course, is a Latin word, pasio, meaning not so much to suffer in the sense of, of affliction as to receive. To receive grace, we must patio, we must suffer. The deep graces that come only with and through magnanimous suffering. The luminous suffering of the saints. We learn to trust God in our flesh when we suffer. I am content with weaknesses, with insults, with hardships and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now, it is hard to be at peace when we feel hemmed in by life to sustain insult peacefully, internally peacefully. It's very hard to smile even on the worst days. But we will gain the strength to give thanks in all circumstances when we are convinced that God's grace is sufficient. Give thanks in all circumstances. How can we do that? By the practiced and studied conviction that my grace is enough. It's sufficient. Lent is only 10 days away. That's why I'm wearing purple in the Latin calendar, as you know. This is sep sexagesima Sunday, last Sunday septuagesima, next Sunday quinquagesima, and then finally quadragesima. So 70 days out, 50, 60 days out, 50 days out, and then 40 days out. From what? From the passion of the Lord, from Good Friday, and of course from Easter. Lent is the time to embrace unavoidable sufferings and even to include, to include avoidable sufferings for the love of God. We are not good at penance, friends, at this time in history because of this fantasy of the triumph of the therapeutic. We've all unconsciously believed to some degree that we can escape most of life's sufferings, and that there's no good in suffering. And that is simply not Christian. We cannot love God very much if we do not suffer for him and with him. We cannot contain our pride unless we discipline our bodies. Gladly will I boast of my weaknesses. With delectation will I suffer these afflictions, that the power of Christ may dwell within me. Finally, the priest prepares for Mass by working through the Latin texts before chanting them. Often in pre preparing for the Mass, he sees a word or phrase in the Latin that wonderfully illuminates the lesson, words that cannot be fully translated by one or two English words. So in the Gospel today, our Lord describes seed that falls on various kinds of ground 
When it falls on the rocky ground, the Latin has et natum aruit quia non habebat humorem. And sprouting, the seed withered for lack of humor. Humorem, the Latin word humor, humor, means moisture, like the four humors of the body, the four temperaments. But over 2,000 years, the word came to mean good humor, at least in our language, the joyful energy, the lightness of spirit that sees all things as part of God's perfect will. As we suffer, the inevitable indignities and outrages of this life, this life, this side of the grave, let's try to keep our good humor. A sunny outlook on all that the good God permits. Take what he gives, said Mother Teresa, and give what he takes with a big smile. Or as Our Lady said, be it done unto me according to your word. And I think she must have said it with a radiant smile. We offer this mass for the soul of Brian, who passed away not long ago, who was buried by his parents, who are here today. And we ask that God be merciful to his son and comfort the family that has suffered this tragic loss. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.